we um, we have our agenda under our tech integration site for you. Um, if they're underlined, they are links to something. So we all have our color coded. Um, I can't see your screen yet, just so you know. Thank you. I also put it in the chat. Can you put it in the chat too? Okay. There we go. Can we see it? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so we each have our other color-coded section. So everything underlined is a link of some sort to get you where you need to be per topic. Um, my Google Drive one, if you click on it, it's a little push button tab set up. So each one of these is a separate topic. So um, there's that plus everything we're going to um, go over. So first of all, it's assessing or accessing Google Drive. So if I pull up my Google Drive, I can either, I'm gonna pull it this way. So if I'm in my email, of course I could use the waffles and mine is, my Google Drive is pretty much towards the top so I can click on it that way. You can also type in, google.com backslash drive. And that'll also get you there. Um, I already have my drive up. So under settings in your Google Drive, you want to make sure that you convert uploaded files to Google Docs editor format. It's a lot easier if you're saving things or you want, when you're saving things and you want to put them in your Google Classroom, in anything Google, it just formats nicer. The only time, sometimes it's an issue when it goes to um, Microsoft Word to Docs, sometimes it doesn't like to play nice. So there's occasion where I uncheck this it just depends on what I'm uploading, but pretty much everything I do just automatically uploads as a Google Doc or, or a Google format of some sort. Then you have your choice. Notice like all my folders are up top first, except my quick access ones that I've been using lately. Um, there's, a, there's this format that I have all my files up first and then my individual documents after that. If I click this little um, list over here, it'll list them lengthwise instead of horizontally. It just depends on how you like to look at things and what your preferences are. It makes no difference except for your own um, viewing pleasure. So whatever is most comfortable for you is what, is what you should do. Um, when when i start when i start looking for things and i need things in particular if you go over to your far right mine says last modified if i click on that you can choose how you want your files arranged whether you want them alphabetically last modified last modified by me last opened by me it just depends on what i'm looking for um, and if i know the name of it or not like sometimes, you know, you, you're working on something, you forget the name of it. So usually I'm on last modified or last modified by me just because that was the last thing I'm working on and that's what I need to find. The arrow switch next to it will go alphabetically or it'll reverse it. So or right now it's last modified. I can reverse, it could be the last thing I modified. It just depends. This works nice in naming when you do name. So, for example, it's going in alphabetical order, but if I click the arrow, it'll reverse it and it'll do my Ys first. So it just depends on what you're looking for and, and how you're looking for it. Okay, so my next on my list is organizing the file.
Oops, I lost it. Okay. So um, what I do like to start every school year um, or even before it starts, I always like to create myself a new folder so I can find things a little easier, um, especially when the school year starts to get away and you have hundreds of documents coming at you. Um, it's sometimes a little hard to keep track. So at least if I put it in the folder for that school year, I have it. So if I go up to the top and click new, and click folder. So I might do a folder for the summer of 2020. Just so I have it, just to kind of keep things organized. And I'm going to hit my folders last modified by me. So notice it's, um, it's right at the top because that's the last thing I organized. So when I go to um, save a document, I can put it in that folder or I can click and drag it in that folder. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, I'm, I'm a person who likes colors. So some of my folders you'll see colored. Like for example, I have one that says Minions. It's all, it's all yellow. Technology department is red because I know that has to have my attention a little more easily. Um, Depending on your color choices, like 2010 or 2019, 2020 is, is pink for me. Um, my own personal ones are purple. Um, it just depends on you. So if, since it's summer, I'm gonna right click on it. I'm gonna change the color because summer to me is nice and bright and yellow. So I'm gonna click on the yellow tab. It's now yellow. So if I'm quickly trying to flip through something, um, the yellow will attract my attention and I'll realize, you know, it'll, it'll attract me more toward, to it. Um, if you right click, there's all kinds of things you can do with that folder. You can download everything. You can view the details on when you created it. I could search just in that folder for a particular document. Um, I could rename the whole folder if I choose to. So maybe I'll change it and make it, you know, school year 2020, 2021. Um, add to stars is just like my favors, my frequent flyers, I always star because I always refer back to those documents or those folders. Move to is when I can move that entire folder to a different one. So if I wanna you know, combine it with something else, I can. Um, I can add the shortcuts to drive. I can get just a link and share it or I can share it per person. So if I wanna share it per person, I can click on it, I can type in a name. I can choose to let them have editing rights. They can view, add, organize, or edit, or I can let them just have view only rights. Um, and then you could also write them a note. So since they're on, I'm just gonna click share, send. And I can share that whole document with them. So if we decide to organize something this summer, we can all put it in that folder or we can change the name of it and call it something else totally different. Um, what else? So if I want to take a particular document, so say I want this copy of this Google Drive that I brought up or that I have attached to your, um, agenda. If I want this document in that folder, I can take this document, I can click file. I can click move. And I could pick a different folder that I might want that to. So if I want to take it to that one for summer, not that it's summer yet, but if I want to move it there so I have it for the summer, I click on that folder and I click move. And it says, are you sure you want to move this? I'm gonna go ahead and move it. I can move it back later if there's an issue. So we just move from the webinar folder to the 2020 folder. 
I'm gonna go ahead and undo that because I really don't want that there. But that's an option for you to move folders, move things to folders. You can also grab a document and just grab on it, click on it and drop it into any one of your folders that you need to. So if I wanna drop that into this folder, I could just move it right there and now it's in that folder and I can um, you know, move it wherever I want to. A lot of times we get documents from the main office and we hurry up and we download them. Then you can choose to move them underneath that particular folders or that particular subject area. So there was a question that says, um, are you actually moving that document or making a copy? I'm moving it. You can make a copy and move the copy. You could do that as well, but I was actually moving that particular document. And then for, for, our, for my sake, I just undid it because I really don't want those documents there. I was just using those as an example. But it's physically moving them. So and there, um, I, I was just asking on behalf of anyone who might not have thought of it. So there, you're saying that there is a way that if I get an email that has something that's important, that I could save it to my drive from my email or no? Yes. Yep, as long as you click on the little drive icon on that particular document. So like, for example, when I was in, um, when I was at Kirkmere, everything that came from administration, I automatically saved it to my drive and then I put it in my Kirkmere folder for that school year. So in case I had to find it again or refer back to it again, I knew where it was at. Okay, so um, moving on. So adding to my drive and uploading, I could do it a bunch of different ways. So first of all, there's this nice little new button up here. So I could decide to create a folder. I can upload a file. I can upload a folder. I can add, you know, all my Google Docs, sheets, slides, drawings, whatever. Um, so I'm going to just go ahead and do, so I'm going to just, um, we already did a folder, but I'll do another one. So if I want a new folder, I'm going to click folder. I'm going to name it. And I'm going to click create. And it'll automatically, either it'll go alphabetical order or in my case, I have last modified up. So it was the first folder there. Okay, I can also then upload a file. So if I click upload a file, and this, this happens, um, you know, if you get a Word document, I don't know if I have any Word documents in here, lots of pictures, but. So if I wanna upload a file, and let's just do, um, I'll just do this one. I think this is all pictures, but I click on the file that I want uploaded or I double, let me see, I click and hit open. Let me move this out of my way. Maybe I'm gonna click on a particular one. I can open that again. And it'll upload and it'll tell you upload is complete. It's not gonna show nice. The only bad thing is you now have to, you now have to find that picture. It's not working so nice today. You might be able to hit refresh and it will show up. Okay. It should be last modified. It should be the first document underneath your folders. Right. That's what I was looking. I was like, where'd it go? Yes, yeah, sometimes you have to hit refresh. It is not showing today for some reason. Maybe because it was a file, the kind of file it was. Let's try it again. Go to documents. Do 3D printing. Nope, those aren't. So if I have a, a Word document, it'll go nice, open.
it'll tell you when it's complete or not. Make sure you hit refresh so you can find it. It should be under all of my folders. Oh. Andre, it's up at the top. Yep, I found so it. Well, mine's right quick here. Quick access, yeah. It's right here. This is a building leadership one. And then I could grab this and I could go ahead and put it in whatever folder I want. She also has the option to right click and then click move to. Right, I was showing the click and drag. Yeah. Okay, what else am I missing? Um, let's see. Oh, searching the drive. This is like the most important thing. So, um, and we use this all the time. You can do it by the name of the document or you can do it by the person who um, sent the document. So I know a lot of times we look for um, directions from um, Mr. LaPlante. So if I start to type in his name, notice he's like the first one on top. If I click his name, it'll bring up all the documents that he has sent. By This is by relevance. You can change that too. You could do it um, last modified. but. Um, there's a lot of times where Tiffany will send us stuff and I'll just type in Trella and um, you can find the documents that that person sent you. If I know um, that I want a district directory that we've created, then I might type in directory. Notice it brings up all the other ones I might have. I can click and find um, what document so when you can't find things, you can go right up to the top and hit search. That's like my ultimate um, favorite thing about Drive is in, just in case you don't remember, you just, you just search for it. Um, it makes life a lot easier. Um, sure. Sorry, uh, Cheryl wants to know, is there a way to condense all the folders? If you put them into one another, you can. I just leave all mine out. Like I can, I can like, I could put a 2021 and I could put, you know, different subjects in each one. I sure can. If that's, if that's what I wanted to do, I can. Yeah, the other thing that I do is at the end of the year, all the folders that I have, I make one folder that says that year and I put every single folder I had from that year and document into that one folder. So if I open the year 2019, I'll open it and all my folders that I created in 2019 are inside there. Right. Absolutely. Um, let me see, we did recent activity. So sharing a folder, just be careful on this because maybe there's something in there you don't want people to change. So like I said, my sharing options, if you right click and hit share, it's either they can edit and organize or they view only. So be careful on who you send it to and who you want to organize it. There's only one document in that folder you want people to have access to. Just send them that one document. Don't send them that whole folder because they can go in there and rearrange, delete, edit, do whatever they want to those documents. So just be careful on what you choose to share. Um, Cheryl would like to know, do you drag them or move them or which is easier? To, okay, Cheryl, is it to put them all together to organize them like for the whole school year? Yes, yes. Um, I think it's a personal preference. It's what's yeah. easier for you. But if she goes to her My Drive, she can select multiple documents and move them at one time if you drag them. Oh. So if she would go to the bottom, um, can you hit the down arrow next to your My Drive over there on the left too? Yep. This will show you all your folders over on the left when you hit that down arrow. And then when I go down to the bottom and I have documents, um, no, no, go to your documents, drag down just a little bit. Uh, not there on the other side. Just scroll down. Yeah. So she holds down on the first, the first one and she drags. Um, you should be able to select a whole bunch of them, not, not just drag that one. You, 
I'm sorry. Hang on. So Click you have on to it, control the shift. Yeah, or control whichever it depends on what kind of device you're on, and it will let you select multiple, and then she can just drag them right over to the left and put them in the folder she wants. So I'm going to click the first one. This is this is for a um, a laptop, not a Mac. This is just a normal laptop. Like but I think you can hit shift. I think everybody can hit shift, and you'll you'll get a whole bunch of them. Or command shift. I can't. Remember. Yep. See, you can select three. So now she has three selected, and then she can just drag all of them. You'll see all three of them and put them in that 2020 that you just made or whatever. And see, she can find it right over there on the left. So I'm not searching up at the top. This is kind of my, this is what I do for me because I have so many folders that I just drag them to the left once I select a whole bunch at one time. That's why I drag and drop them. I usually don't move one at a time and click on them. I drag a whole bunch by holding down the shift key. I guess it also depends on where they're at in your folder too. Yep. It Sometimes does. it's just easier, you know, to drag one at a time or like, um, the, like, for example, these are all templates, so I might just drag all these, but if there's only one that I want, I'm just going to grab the one and put it into um, my slides folder. because these you are have, If they templates. have multiples that aren't next to each other, like if you wanted the first one, the third one, and the fifth one, if you hold down your control key, you should be able to select all three of them and move them even if they aren't next to each other. So no, she's got that one and she holds down her control key and click the middle one. Um, no, nope, it's, it's you take out. I, uh, I can do it on, on mine. I'm not sure, but yeah, you can, you can actually select the ones that you want. You don't have to drag them all. Usually it might be shift in control. I'm not sure. It, on a it, It's, um, it's just control. If you hold yeah. down your control button and, and click on them, you can do it that way. Yes. That's what I thought. Okay. So it's control that you can click multiple copies or multiple things. And then I can drop them into my slides thumping folder. Okay. Um, deleting and if you delete something, it's down here in your trash. So if you accidentally delete something or purposely delete something because you know you're sick of looking at it, you can you can right click on it and you can either restore it or delete it forever, your choice. So some of these, like I was practicing, I might just delete it forever because I never want to see that picture again or that video. So if you accidentally throw something away, go down to your trash and you have the choice to um, restore it and recover it. And if you're deleting a file, so if there's a file that I want deleted, I can right click and I should be able to delete it. Where to go? Okay. It's at the bottom, it says remove. Didn't say remove. I have stuff in the way. Okay, so let's try this again. Right click. Oh, removes down at the bottom. There you go. Um, so, so there's lots of things. I know there's my my drive definitely could be a lot more organized, but sometimes you know life gets away with us. And we just kind of just throw them in our drive and move on to make sure we have them. Um, any other questions about drive? Ladies, can you think of anything else we need to add? Greg, if you're still on here, can you think of anything else we need to add? I just want to remind people not to throw away stuff in the shared drive. The shared drive is for everybody. And when you start throwing that away, if I would click on it, it will say, this is in the trash. So please don't try to um, change your shared drive. That is stuff that is shared with you from somebody else. Because people ask me all the time and I'm like, that's not yours. Don't start throwing stuff away. Just leave it alone. Right, I know you don't like it in your folder and it's getting on your nerves because it's not as organized as you might want it. But you can always put it in a file that said shared a shared file too, if, if it bothers you that much. And the start, like I said, the start is where like I have my go-to, my frequent flyers. And if I want to remove the star from something, I can. So if there's, if you know, I don't want to look at it anymore, I can right click on it and I can remove the star. And then if I want it back again, I just find that folder and right click it and start again. So it's no big deal. 
Anything else, ladies? Where, does the star, where is the star? I didn't see the star on the folder. Oh, okay. So, so if if I want this this um, summer one, mm -hmm. I right click and I can click on and says add star. So it's going to be there's going to be a star on that folder. So when I go to this star down here in the left column, mm -hmm. when I hit my star, that folder is now in this folder too. It's in the main area and it's in the starred area, so I can find it. Oh, okay. I only do that if it's like, like I would do that for the school year, my 2019, 2020. Um, see my 2019, 2021 is there. When the school year's over, I'll unstar it and let it go back to the general population, so to speak. And then I'll star like my summer 2020. This way, I know this is this is where I find my frequent frequent flyer um, folders. But it's just it's just your preference. You don't have to start. I just do to make my life easier. Okay. Anything else? All right, Tiff. I'm going to stop sharing and. Okay, I got it. All yours. Okay, so our next um, piece of information, if you look on our agenda, is the Google Calendar. And um, all of these things on here are things that you're going to need to know if you ever plan on getting Google certified. But it's also going to help you to become more proficient and more organized. And I can tell you, I can't tell you how much it saved my life in creating a calendar and using it consistently. So you can find that in your apps. Um, your calendar and you can see over here that these calendars here are the ones that I have created or they belong to me um, some of these ones down here they are shared with me so I have to be careful with them because they belong to somebody else and really I only have the rights on what they give to me you can see everything out here is color-coded one of these things that they started is um, once you end something, you're past the time, it becomes dimmed. So you know that you've already completed those things. So everything on my calendar that's dim are past events. Everything that's bright and bold are upcoming events of, of items that I have. So on your calendar, one of the things that you need to know that you can do is you know, need to know that you can create a separate calendar from your own. So if you want to do that, you want to go down to other calendars and hit the plus. And I'm going to create a new calendar. And I'm just going to say practice calendar. And you can see that um, there's some things that I can do, but I'm just going to hit create. But there are, are options over on the left um, that I can actually browse for somebody else's calendar, but I don't really want to do that. I'm going to go out of my settings and then over here. You can see practice. There's my practice calendar that I just created. So in my practice calendar, one of the things I tell people all the time is that you need to make sure when you're adding things, you need to add it on the correct calendar. So if I'm going to add an event, this is actually defaulted to my calendar. So the calendar that's under my name. But let's say I don't have my calendar shared with anybody. Nobody will see this except me. So if I put um, tech meeting, I know that I can go out and I created this calendar called technology department. I can add this. You want to make sure that you add a time because it's actually defaulted to all day. And if I don't choose anything else in here and hit save, you're going to see that in your, um, if I change my view to day, that tech meeting just shows up as a bar at the very early time in the morning. You will get a notification um, really early in the morning at like 12 a.m. or 1 a.m. that you have a tech meeting today. So you wanna make sure that, um, I'm gonna go back in, I'm gonna edit this now. And you can see it's defaulted to all day. I'm gonna uncheck that. When I uncheck that, it now opens up where I can choose a time. So if we have a tech meeting and I'm gonna make the tech meeting at 1 p.m., 
from 1 to 1 to 130. You also have this advanced option in here to say, um, we're going to do it every fourth Tuesday, or we're going to do it on the last Tuesday of the month. Or I can customize it and say every three weeks we're going to do this. But I'm just going to say we're going to do it um, every month on the fourth Tuesday. I can add a location. And I'm just adding a classroom. You can choose to add a video meet conference right here, which is really, really nice. They just added this feature. I love it. I can also, again, I can change the calendar where this appears, even within this advance, and I can also change the color of the calendar. I can also add um, a Google Doc, so I can go ahead and I can share any kind of um, information I have into the calendar. I'm going to paste this in here. So there's my, and I can write a note in here. I'm going to go ahead and say, please use the agenda. Okay. You can link websites in here. So if you wanted the students to go to a certain website that you wanted to talk about while you were in there, you would do this within here too. You could also add your guests. So I would say I'm going to add Rachel. I'm going to add Andrea. And I'm going to say, that sounds good to me and I'm going to hit save and I can choose to send them an invitation or not send them an invitation. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit send so they can have an invitation. The other thing that you can do, which is really cool, which they um, started not too long ago and I love it is that if you create a meeting and you add guests from here and Rachel, you have this option to see their availability. So I can go in and I can see what times on each calendar they have available. So if you're using your calendar for access, then other people will see, they're not gonna see, now they have their calendar shared with me so I can actually see the words on there. But if they don't, it will just show up as busy. I can't see what they're actually doing. It will only say busy. And then I can find a time for us to meet that's maybe in a block where they don't have anything going on. So that's one of the new features that they added that I absolutely love. Um, and it's very convenient for you to find, find a time to meet with other people. But that's only as accurate as the people that are putting events on their calendar. Now I can tell you, you see I have these orange right here that I added. This is actually out on our website. So I have this shared publicly on the um, technology integration website. When you go down here and you see these, see it says tech meeting that showed up here. Now all my personal information isn't here because you can see over here on the left, it's only gonna show what I shared from the tech department. So a lot of people are like, how can I share a calendar with my parents that where they can see the events that are happening? So if you create a Google Classroom, so you can see I have this Google Classroom over here that has my students in it. I can go into the settings and I can make this public for um, your parents. So if I decided to make this public, I could then invite them to see this. So I would get a shareable link and I would send them the link and they could see the event. You could also share it with them specifically. So if you had a parent, and I believe you can only do this with people in access, but let's see. Oh no, because that's not. I can actually just allow them to view. Come on. I can't see my. I can allow them to either only see if we're free or busy. They can see all the events, um, but I wouldn't allow them to do anything right here. So they could see all the event details. So one of the things about sharing your Google Calendar out there is you can see I have assignments that are due for the students. If you shared this with um, publicly, if you put this on a website, then your parents can go in and see the assignment and what's due. They cannot go into Google Classroom and see it, but they could actually see it um, on the calendar, what things are due and if their child um, is completing those assignments. So that, that's, that's an idea that you can use to communicate with parents also. 
But not only do you have to, can you put the assignments on here? If I had a field trip that I wanted to make sure, I would put field trip permission slips due. And then I can choose to put this in my, um, I have to do it from inside the classroom, sorry. Um, you can put it on there and it will show up and the parents will be able to see that. But you have to do that from within the classroom. You're gonna see you have a calendar in your Google Classroom. Let me go out. I have a delay, there we go. And in your classwork, you have your calendar. And that's where you can um, add your information for that. So um, there, are, there are other things you wanna share with them, just go ahead and put it in there and it will show up on your calendar to share with your parents. Oh, sorry, I'm getting clicky. The other thing that you can do when you are setting up a meeting, you can see when I set up a meeting, I don't have the option to set up any notifications. So if I decide that I'm having a tech meeting, but I know I have something right before that, um, from 10, I may want to go into more options and send a notification to myself. So I get a pop-up on my, on my, um, in my class, on my phone, something to remind me that I need to go to this meeting. So you can make it 10 minutes. You can make it 15 min minutes before the meeting. Sometimes you just need to have a reminder. Those reminders are inside, um, the more options set up. So that's where you would go to make sure that you get a notification of what's coming up. Now, I really like it because on my um, iPad, if I'm doing something and on my phone, I actually get a pop-up that says you have X in 15 minutes. So then I can start to wind down and I can, can, can prepare to go to the next step. Um, Tiffany, Cheryl would like to know what do, what do I have to do to have the assignments listed on the calendar? Is this automatic? They already are. So over here, if you're in your calendar, you can see some of these check marks are on and some of them are off. So if I want to see, um, if I don't want to see the practice or the reminders or the tasks, you can see my, my calendar is changing now that I took that off. If I want to see that, I would just click on it. Now I did hide my, my school calendars or my class calendars because I have a lot of them. Um, but if I go into my settings, every single calendar, you can see these are all hidden. There's one that birthday calendars, whatever. I can go in and I can find 2020 Google Classroom. Where's my 2020? I can unhide it. And then when I go out, you can see that that calendar is back here and any assignments that I come up will be in blue. So those will be over there, but, but whatever you have turned off and on will be over here. I mean, for example, Greg shares his calendar with me, but when I click on it, I can only see when he's busy and when he's not. So all the things that he has on his calendar where he will not be able to meet with anybody or during, as during where he's meeting with somebody else, he has marked as busy. Um, Andrea shares her full calendar with me so that I can click on her. And of course, it's all color coded by color. I need to have things color coded. So you need to make sure when you do this for yourself that you um, color code them. And you can click on the three dots and this is where you can choose the colors um, for yourself. And you can change the color of other people's calendars. Like I made uh, Greg's green and Andrea's yellow and Rachel's is blue. It does not change their calendar. That is only for your view. It's only for your view. The other thing that you can have is tasks. And if you go to the bottom of your calendar, you have this little arrow down here at the bottom. And then you have a little icon that says tasks and it will show me things that I need to do. So if I need to set up something for myself that I need to do and I just say, um, finish presentation. Because I know that I may not remember, I may choose to make this a task. You can see it automatically turns yellow and it's a task. I can put any information in there and I can hit save. 
and it will show up over here, finished presentations. What's really nice is not only does it show up here, it also shows up in your mail. So if you have tasks that you need to complete, you can go in your mail and you see I have the tasks over here. I can have these open and it will load them for me on items that I need to make sure get completed. So I don't get lost sometimes in reading emails and trying to finish projects that I, that I, instead of finishing the projects that I should be working on. So that's an option also. Oh, sorry, I need to um, close it. And then again, there's just a little arrow at the bottom of your screen that opens and closes your tasks. Okay, if you uncheck that, which I've done before, you will no longer see your tasks. And if you go over here, um, that's the only place where they're going to show up. So just be aware of that. But they will no longer show up on your calendar. You need to have that turned on. They turned it into a calendar. If you created a calendar that you didn't want, so I have this practice calendar and I don't want it anymore, I can go into settings. I can go into the bottom and I can delete it. And I can permanently delete a calendar. Now, the other thing that you can do is if you're part of a, um, whatever you're a part of, like this careers for seventh grade, I have it hidden. I did not make this. I can only see the events. This is very old. I can unsubscribe from the calendar and remove myself. And that way it no longer shows up in my calendars. If you just start, start to decide that you have too many calendars. The last thing I wanted to talk about is appointment slots. Um, when you click on here, you do have the option to create an appointment slot, but you do need to know that you should be in the week or day view to have this work correctly. And I usually like to go into the week view and then I will go in and I will say uh, tech meetings. Oh. Two. And then I'm going to make these appointment slots. I can choose how much time. So if you were trying to work with your students and you're making appointments for your students to come and work with you, and I, don't, and I want it to be from, from two to three, every 15 minutes, you're gonna have a new student. Okay, I would hit save. Once I click on this, it says go to appointments calendar. I need to grab the URL at the top. I need to copy that and I need to send it to those students I wanna work with, or you can post this on a website and then they can click and you can see that somebody signed up for the first slot already, 845. So nobody can take that slot. They would have to pick the next slot of a time when they would have to um, sign up for an appointment. So are there any questions on using the calendar? I don't see any yet. So that those are the basics of calendar and how to use it. Um, the best thing you can do is start to use this and share it with somebody else to um, start to get used to using it. Uh, maybe share it with one person where you collaborate with all the time. It could be the other person that, that maybe you team teach with. Uh, some people might create a calendar for when you're meeting with your students in Zoom. So that way everybody on your team isn't trying to have Zoom meetings at the same time with their students because they can't be in two places at one time. So it's just a thought. So I'm going to stop sharing. Sorry, I was muted. Again, on the agenda, <clears throat> on, in the title, there's actually a slideshow, which I can show you right here. So a week from now, a month from now, when school starts again, and you're like, uh, I don't remember how to do any whatever, um, there's some tips, some cute little videos that will help to remind you. I'm going to be trying to very quickly uh, do Google Keep and Google Drawings. So Google Keep is basically uh, a place where you can keep, keep a track of your notes, um, anything that you might need. The way to do it to get there, I'm sorry, I have to move this, is to go to your Google Waffle. Mine is up here, yours might be farther down here. 
if you are going to plan to use it, you might want to click and drag it up like how I did. So it's right here. So that's one way to get into it. The other way, um, which I actually turned off, I'm going to go ahead and show you my, my keep the way that it did. Uh oh, okay. So there's a question. It says, can you share it to Google Classroom? Um, I'm not sure what you're asking about. Are you asking about the calendar or the keep? Tony. The calendar is already shared with your classroom. Anytime you create a classroom, you're going to see an icon at the top that anybody that's in that Google class will have access to the calendar. So I don't know if you can real quick, I'm sorry, um, Rachel, go to, go to the Google Classroom that I shared with okay. you. Um, so over on the left, she, yep, go ahead. Yep. And then she can click on um, the Classroom 2020 Google certification. And then when she goes to classwork, you're gonna see that you have a calendar there it automatically creates one for every class that you have. You just have to make sure that it's turned on on the left and it's not hidden. Yeah, and whenever there's due dates or whatever, it'll automatically give it a color and then, like I know that because I'm in the, this classroom, when Tiffany makes assignments with due dates, it pops up on my calendar and I even, I believe I get email notifications as well. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, no problem. So uh, when you go ahead and go into your keep, um, um, which is fine. Um, at the top, it says take a note. Um, there's three basic options. It says like take a note with an image, take a note with a drawing, or make a new list. I, or I can just click on it and then I can automatically start to take notes. So say that I want groceries. Um, I can go ahead and start adding things. Um, if I want to be able to check them off, I just click the three dots here, the show check boxes. And I have it set so that it fills from the top. If you don't like that and you want to add new things to the bottom, you can go to the little settings cogwheel and where it says settings. And I can click add new uh, items to the bottom. And you can see that my note disappeared because I didn't, didn't disappear. But because I don't have it pinned, it actually went down below. So if that ever happens and you know that you uh, were making one, I can go ahead and search. And you can see how it just automatically pops up. So I can go ahead and go back in. Um, and start. And you can see, oh, it didn't actually change because I didn't finish it. That's okay. So say that I want to uh, have my husband able to go, like I make the list at home and he's out at work. He can stop at the grocery store on the way home. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. But <laughs> I can go ahead and add a collaborator and type his email here. Say that um, I'm going to have. Tiffany be my personal shopper. I can go ahead and add her. Click save and you can see that she's now on my grocery list. So she can see everything. She'll get an email notification about this and she'll be able to see everything that needs to be uh, bought. If you have multiple grocery lists, which I know this isn't teaching, you could put it by store. Um, if I want to pin it to the top so that I can see it quickly because I'm going to be using it. Anything that you pin to the top is going to be at the top of both this and your mobile app if you decide to put it on there. I can color code if I like to help things stay organized. I could actually set a reminder for a certain time or I could pick a place. I could put, pick Walmart and then choose which one that I want. Oh, I'll pick the one in Boardman. So when I'm driving down the street, 
um, if I'm getting close to Walmart, it will pop up on my phone, like a pop-up notification saying, hey, guess what? You have groceries that you need to get from Walmart. Um, if I'm done with this, I can go ahead and archive it. I could uh, add a drawing. I could add a, I don't know if it's going to, there it is, picture, add a picture here. Some people um, like to, I'm going to go to my downloads. Some people like to uh, put cute little headings at the top so that everything is cute uh, and super Pinterest organized like. Um, once I'm done with that, I can go ahead and just go back. So you can see that it is over here. Again, that is like a real life application. You can see that I have some, um, some rubric type things over here. Um, and the cool thing about Keep is that it really does integrate with everything. So if I were in Google Docs, say this is a student's work. And again, Tiffany talked about if you can't see the sidebar here, it might be closed. I uh, personally like to keep mine open. Um, I could go ahead and click on my keep. And again, you can see that the grocery list is at the top, but I can go ahead and say that I want to add a comment to the student's work here. And I feel like I'm not seeing, oh, there it is right there. Hello. Okay, so then I can go here and I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag from the top of that comment. I'm gonna go ahead and copy it and paste it and go ahead and comment in there. And you can see that it took that and then the, I actually it ha actually has a website link to help them with that type of uh, writing, whatever the error is. Um, So there's another um, app here. There's actually an app extension. Sorry, I'm sorry. This, there's like too many things in my way. So say that I go to Wikipedia and I want to learn about Albert Einstein. I actually have this Google Keep Chrome extension, um, which is like a lifesaver for me right now because my, my YouTube is not working. Anyone that's been around knows that I'm having issues. I'm having issues with more than that. But um, so I can go ahead and click on this and it will automatically save that site for me. And then I could go ahead and start taking notes um, if I want to. Sorry, I'm going to minimize this. I could go ahead and, oh, you see that how I highlighted it and then automatically put that in there. If I decide that I also, this is great for student research. Again, not that we're advocating plagiarism because we're not. But you can see now that I have two separate notes and I have my source right there. I could add a label to it. Uh, I don't have one that's pre-made for that. So what I would probably do at the end of it to help it to be more, first of all, put a title and then I might also at the very end of it put a hashtag research report just to help it to be more searchable. So um, then if I wanted to, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go back here to my keep and refresh. Um, and it's going to be down below because I did not pin it. So I'm going to quickly search 
and you can see that it pops right up right here. So I actually went with this more, the three dots here. You can see that I actually have the option to copy it to Google Docs. So I can do it this way, or if I have a new doc, you can see that my sidebar is going to load. Go ahead and search. And it's right. Here. So I can actually, rather than copying and pasting it, which might take longer, I can actually just drag it and drop it into my document. Again, I would have to rewrite this in my own words, but it does have my source there to help me with my research. Um, another thing that I use in Google Keep is another extension that I actually turned off. This is what, uh, actually yours will probably be empty if you've never used it before, but it will look like that. So I use something called category tabs and I do have the link for it. Basically what that does is it gives you the option. I have to reload, you see how it loaded up here? It gives you the option down here on the left-hand side. Sorry, there's like a lag. Um, it says customize categories. So I can choose what colors I want, and then I can go ahead and change the labels for like, say this is tech department information, uh, webinars, distance learning, things that I want. You might want to have lesson plans. You might want to have, um, science, you know, different topics, different categories, and then color code. And then if I want to see just tech department information, I can go ahead and click on that and I'm going to see just that stuff. If I want to click on distance learning, I'm going to click on that and see just that stuff. Uh, it's just like a little help, a quick way to help you to search. Editing labels down here on the left hand side. Sorry, is there a question? It was a question about calendars so that we're going to answer later. Mm. Okay. Editing labels. I can create a new label. And type anything and go ahead and click it. So then there, when I'm searching or whatever it is, book report, whatever it is that I want to do, I could also go ahead and click the edit and go ahead and get rid of it. If I don't, you know, say it was for a report and I don't need it anymore. And then you'll see it says deleted. If, that, if I have that label attached to things, it will delete the notes with attached to it as well. So, um, Really quick, it actually keep goes into everything. So you can see here, say I have this uh, email for Go Needle. I can go ahead and open my keep and click take a note. And you can see that it automatically has linked this note to this email. So say this is from my administrator and they want me to do X, Y, Z. Um, I can go ahead and add a quick to-do list, start, typing whatever it is that I need to do. And then maybe I wanna pin it to the top, click done. I can go back to my keep. Oh, and just to let you know the, um, the category tabs, if I click that, it will automatically open Google Keep super quick for you. So if I go to the top, you can see that this was my, oh, it didn't quite save, my to-do list. Um, and then I, I can open this click on this and it will automatically take me back to that important email that I had uh, attached it to. So just a little quick thing that might help you with organization. Same thing with calendar. If I were to go, uh, that's not actually my meeting. Say I go to the webinar for tomorrow and I go ahead and I open it. I can go ahead and open a, a keep my uh, keep again, take a note. You can see that it automatically saved a link to this calendar um, event. So say um, this is like two weeks from now instead of tomorrow. I could start taking notes about what I want to put on the agenda, da 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 da, 
Um, go ahead and pin it. And I can see that it didn't quite save agenda entirely because I'm going too quickly. Or my Wi Fi is lagging. See, it happens to me too, Reggie. I'm going to go ahead and click done. And when I go into keep, I will be able to come back to this uh, calendar event. Same thing. Um, actually, if I were to go into slides, new slides presentation, and the way that I'm doing that quickly is actually Google Docs Quick Create. Um, if I want to, just like I added into a document, I can go ahead and take my note and put it into, say I wanna put it into the title, I wanna put it into the subtitle, it will automatically do that for me. So hopefully just by showing you this really, really quickly, I know there's so many other things that can be done um, both in Keep itself and in in um, the the mobile version, you can do uh, actually text to a uh, speech to text. You could uh, leave voice notes. You could also, if I were to take a picture of some text, I could go ahead and import it here. Like say, I take a quick little picture here, and then I save it. Actually, then I go back to my keep. I can go ahead and find it, open it, and when I click take a note, usually, oh. Actually, I'm going to have to click the three dots on the um, on the mobile version. It will automatically do it for you. If I click the three dots, I can click grab image text, and it will automatically take the pic the text from my picture and put it down here. So, say someone's business card, a uh, parent gives you a scrap of paper with their phone number on it. You could go ahead and take a picture of it, and it will grab the text for you. Um, there's a um, question from Reggie, and she says, "Can you show how to get the toolbar up again on the side?" Um, I'm actually in Keep, so it's not going to be a toolbar there. If I'm in my email, if you don't see it down here on the bottom, there's like a little uh, show slide panel, a little arrow. You can click it out, and it will be there. Um, it's the same in Calendar. Again, if it's not there, you're just going to have to click that little arrow. It's the same thing over in Docs, in Drawings. It's actually in Drive also. Uh, it's pretty much everywhere, except for in Drive, you can't really drag and drop, but mostly everywhere else, it's there. Okay. Any other questions about Keep? No. All right. I know I'm already over. <laughs> There's so much in drawings that I would like to do, but that's okay. So in drawings, the trick to that is it's harder to get to. Um, I know that there is a way that you can type it in. You have to go into Drive. I mean, if you memorize the uh, address, go to New. Then I'm going to have to click down here more. And then you can see that Google Drawings is right here. That's one way to do it. I do use this uh, Google Docs Quick Create. So I have the option to automatically quickly make a brand new docs spreadsheet presentation drawing or form. So I can click that as well and it will open it right up. This is basically like a blank slate. Um, I know I have some examples here. Um, the, the examples here for uh, for Keep were for like helping with the writing process. I know um, there was a district that used guided note taking for math. Um, they even put like either the unit or the standard. This was in students, so they would take pictures of their notes or pictures of the board or pictures of their work, and it would help them to uh, keep things straight. 
um, Google Drawings. It, this one is a basic example of just having a student uh, answer a math problem and kind of explain their process. Or you can have all these different fill-in activities, labeling activities, uh, drag and drop, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I have a bunch of different templates so you don't have to uh, uh, reinvent the, the wheel. Is, could you do an anchor chart? Could you do anchor charts? Absolutely, and I believe that I have, hmm, I'm not sure if it's in here. I believe that I had a picture of, of that, that someone had actually um, taken a picture of each of their anchor charts and then it had, um, I'm not sure if it was for them or if it was for students, because you can actually, again, add collaborators and share it with students or just have that be a place that you can house things. Um, were you talking about Keep or are you talking about, oh, either one. I was talking about Keep. They, they kept a picture of their anchor charts, um, but you could definitely make anchor charts on here. You just have to make the size that you want it to be. So the, this is very much like Google Slides to a certain degree. If you go to Page Setup and then Custom, you can, again, you have a choice of pixels, points, centimeters, or inches. You could make this page size um, real quick. I'm going to show you. I can make it three by three inches. And then I could go ahead and insert, I'm going to search, that, search for a blue background. Choose one that I like. Go ahead and insert it. Um, and then make it. This is actually to try to tie it back to keep. Um, to make a, like a little header for keep. Um, but again, you can make anything. And I know that it, I'm already way over, so I'm just trying to do something super basic. Uh, go ahead and put in a shape. If I go and try to do it myself, it kind of gets a little wonky. So if you're trying to make a shape and you click shift, it will kind of keep the aspect ratio so it looks like a perfect circle instead of what I create in my world. <laughs> um, you can see it has a black background. If I don't like that, I can go ahead and make it transparent. I could make it whatever. I could make it thicker. I could do whatever I want. Oh, that's making me blind. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it transparent. Um, if I click inside of it, I can automatically type, go ahead and center it, uh, try to find some funky, beautiful. Ooh, that's way too big. And again, it's just playing with it. And then I could change it so that it is beautiful to me. And if I want to use this in my keep or pretty much anywhere else, I'm going to have to go ahead and download it. You can see I can download it as a PDF. So if I had something that was paper sized, uh, that I wanted to print out as an anchor chart or whatever, I could do that. So there's uh, a question JPEG. that says you don't have to add text boxes. Um, you do if you're having text by itself. If you're if you want to type inside of the shape, you don't. You just click inside of it. Does that answer your question? Unless you want to, you want to deliberately uh, add a text box in a different area. So I can go ahead and, you know, add a text box off to the side. The only thing with uh, drawings and even also with slides is that you have to remember this is sort of like, uh, I don't know if you've ever done anything with Microsoft Publisher, but there are layers here. So since I made this after I made that, I can put it and it'll go on top. If I accidentally hadn't, you could go to order 
and you see that I could send this backwards so then you wouldn't be able to see it anymore. Or I could bring it back to the front. Do, are there any other questions? Somebody wants to know if there's just a class on drawings. Oh, we can do one. I know that because it's like time is a, a crunch yeah. right now. It, this is, it, drawings is big, but we wanted to yeah. give you guys the basics on how yeah. to. So if I wanted to use this, I could download this as, I'm gonna download it as a picture file and that'll go into my downloads and then I could go back into my keep. Close this one. I can go ahead and go to my downloads and see if it's in there. Actually, I could probably, sorry about that. Oh, I that down. Folder, it's right there. Hmm. There it is. And then you can see that this will be at the top. This is a square shape. You can make it rectangular, however it is. And then you could start with your list of the things that you need to grade, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's so many different options that you can do with. Like for example, if I go here, you can see um, historical newspaper or catalog template. And it'll show you what it is. And if you wanna use this with your class, you can go ahead and click use template. It will make you a copy and then you can edit it as you see fit. I know there's so much more and I know I'm over time, but it's just, I guess, a taste trying to tie things together also. Are there any other questions? Nope. I don't even know what I did with my. I definitely think now that we will we'll probably make um, drawing it its own class. It's going to take a whole hour probably to talk about how to create stuff like that. This is one of the options that I was talking about. If anybody was in yesterday. Um, for making badges for your students if you have a badging system that you can create them um, right here in Google Drawings. Yeah, definitely. Because it could be as easy as you want it to be or as complicated as you want it to be.